Hare Krishna devotees, please accept my humble obeisances to Agla Shri Prabhupada. This morning we will be having a class on Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 8, Verse 18. And the title of the chapter is Prayers by Queen Kunti and Prakshat Saved. And we are very happy to have His Holiness Chandramali Swami giving the class this morning. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to you, Agla Shri Prabhupada. Maharaj, we can't hear you. Um... Mm -mm. Maharaj, you're on mute, Maharaj. We still can't hear you, Maharaj. Can anyone else hear Maharaj or is it just me? Uh, Mataji, I think um, I, even we are not able to hear Guru Maharaj. Um. Thank you for letting me know, Srimati. Maharaj, yeah. Guru Maharaj, um, um, Guru Maharaj you are muted. Oh, yes. No, Guru Maharaj. Guru Maharaj, can you kindly um, uh, log off and log in again, Guru Maharaj? We'll patiently wait for Maharaj to log back in and pray that this time it works. Can you hear me now? We can hear you very well, Marge. Hurry, ball. Okay. I'm going to request because of because of health, I can't, I don't have any energy. If the devotees can chant the Sanskrit translation and purport, then yes, I'll, speak, Marge. I'll speak the class. Sure, Marge. I can do that for you, Marge. Kunti Vacha Namasye Purusham Tvadvam Ishvaram Prakrite Param Alakshyam Sarva Bhutanam Antar Bahir Avastitam Synonyms, word for word translation Kunti Vacha Srimati Kunti said Namasya, let me bow down Purusham, the Supreme Person Tva, you Adhyam the original, Ishvaram, the controller, Prakriti of the material cosmos, Param, beyond, Alakshyam, the invisible, Sarva, all, Bhutanam, all living beings, Anta, within, Bahi, without, Avastitam, existing, Transition in purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta, Swami Shiva Prabhupada, Ki Jai. Srimati Kunti said, O Krishna, 
I offer my obeisances unto you because you are the original personality and are unaffected by the qualities of the material world. You are existing both within and without everything, yet you are invisible to all. Purport. Srimati Kunti Devi was quite aware that Krishna is the original personality of Godhead, although he was playing the part of her nephew. Such an enlightened lady could not commit a mistake by offering obeisance unto her nephew. Therefore, she addressed him as the original Purusha, beyond the material cosmos. Although all living entities are also transcendental, they are neither original nor infallible. The living entities are apt to fall down under the clutches of material nature. But the Lord is never like that. In the Vedas, therefore, he is described as the chief among all living entities. Nityo nityanam chetanas chetananam. Then again, he is addressed as Ishvara or the controller. Living entities or the demigods like Chandra and Surya are also to come, are also to some extent Ishvara but none of them is the supreme Ishvara or the ultimate controller. He is the Parameshwara or the super soul. He is both within and without. Although he was present before Kunti as her nephew, he was also within her and everyone else. In the Bhagavad Gita 15, the Lord says, I am situated in everyone's heart and only due to me, one remembers, forgets, and is cognizant, etc. Through all the Vedas, I am to be known because I am the I am to be known because I'm the compiler of the Vedas, and I'm the teacher of the Vedanta. Queen Kunti affirms that the Lord, although both within and without all living beings, is still invisible. The Lord is, so to speak, a puzzle for the common man. Queen Kunti experienced personally that Lord Krishna was present before her, yet he entered within the womb of Uttara to save her embryo from the attack of Ashwatthama's Brahmastra. Kunti herself was puzzled about whether Sri Krishna is all pervasive or localized. In fact, he is both, but he reserves the right of not being exposed to persons who are not surrendered souls. This checking curtain is called the Maya energy of the Supreme Lord, and it controls the limited vision of the rebellious souls. It is explained as follows. Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Sarasvati Devi Dei Gauravani Pachari Nangi Vishishwa Shunyavari Pasya Nidhi Satari Nei Panchakalpa Kupischa Kupasindu Vedacha Kitanam Padme Gyo Vaishnava Gyo Namaho Maha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Guru Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasani Gaur Bhaktivinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare hmm. We're getting a little insight here about the nature of the or the uh, position of the Supreme Personality of God. Those in the material world can never understand the, the Lord. He, as it says here, he remains a puzzle. And for those who are rebellious to the Lord, he, he doesn't exist for them at all. Um, his nature is transcendental, as it says here, nityam, nityanam, chetan is chetananam. Nityam means that the one, nityanam means us, the living entities, he is the one living entity who maintains all other living entities, Chaitanas. So his position is completely free from anything material. That's why when people try to 
understand God by their own mental speculations, they always are wrong <laughs> or fall short drastically. Why? Because he's not within the three, three modes of material nature. He's transcendental. And the only way one can understand the Lord, or at least having a connection with the Lord, is through the process of bhakti, the devotion to the Lord. And then the Lord reveals himself along with his nature to those who worship him in devotion. The foolish living entities in the material world um, think they can be independent of God. They don't know that the three modes of material nature are what comprises the entire material energy. And that entire, entire material energy is controlled by the Supreme Personality of God that he puts it into place and it works according to his arrangements. Um, and therefore, those who try to understand God try to work within the three modes of material nature and they become baffled or become frustrated. <laughs> Because he's not, he's not understood in that way. He's only understood by bhakti. Bhakti mama vajananti yavanya tattvataha. Only by devotion can I know, be known as I am standing before you, O Arjun. Only in this way can you understand the mysteries of, only in this way can you enter into the mysteries of my understanding. So unless there is bhakti, there is no understanding. People get some understanding of God through karma yoga, jnana yoga. One is a little bit better than the other. Through philosophical speculation on the absolute truth, people somehow come to the idea that there is, uh, there is an entity beyond this whole material energy who has created this material energy and he is the one to be worshipped. That's the Gyanis. The Karmis don't want to worship the Lord. They just want to use the Lord in order to improve their material situation. The, um, the Karmis, yeah. The Karmi Yogis want to offer something to the Lord and um, use the Lord in order to get some benefit from their activities. So you have the karmis, karma yogis, the jnanis, and then you have the bhaktas. The bhaktas are, their motivation is to serve the Lord in order to please the Lord. And then Krishna becomes available. Everything can be understood. Uh, here, it also mentions, he is within everything and he is without everything simultaneously so how do you how do you rationalize that from a from a lot from ordinary logic you can't how how can something be in and out at the same time or how can something be near and far at the same time well these are some of the qualities of krishna and he can manifest himself in the hearts of all living entities and be very much connected with the living entity in a very intimate way, or he can be so far away that people can't even begin to understand he exists. It's all based on devotion. That's why it says here, uh, uh, I am situated in one who remembers me Vedanta Gyanam Avayana. No, that's not the right verse. Let me find. Sarvashi Jaham Ridisani Visno Matat Smirti Gyanam Apohanam Jah. Vedais Chair Savam Aham Eveda Vedyo Vedanta Krid Veda Eva Chaham. Krishna says, I am the compiler of the Vedas, I am the knower of the Vedas, and the Vedas all come for me. So if you want to know Krishna, Vedic knowledge is the, is the direction by which one understands the nature of Krishna. When Vedic knowledge reaches a certain point of understanding, bahunam jnana ante jnana mamam 
Vasudeva Sarvamiti Samahatma Sadurlabha, only after carefully studying all religious scriptures for many lifetimes, then one finally surrenders to the Lord in devotion. Then bhakti begins. <laughs> So all of these other persons who try to approach the Lord get a little, uh, a, a little bit of, uh, elevated away from the uh, from the material energy, but they cannot understand Krishna or even slightly understand Krishna. Of course, no one under can understand Krishna completely. It says that Krishna is so great that he can't even understand himself. <laughs> Now, is that a, just some kind of nice, cute little statement to make everybody feel good? No, it's actually true because the nature of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is he's dynamic. Dynamic means he's ever expanding. His influence, his exp he, he expands within himself more and more and more. He's always becoming greater. And so, uh, you think about that. Can God, who is the, the supreme great, become any greater? Well, when you understand it from the perspective of spirituality, you understand that spirituality is not limited. Material is limited. And therefore, because material is limited, you can you get to a certain point and then you can't go any farther. But in spirituality, everything is unlimited. So um, Queen Kunti here, Prabhupada starts off very nicely, it's interesting. Why would she offer her obeisances in the form of these prayers to her nephew? Usually the nephew offers the respects to the auntie, but it's the other way around here. Because Queen, Queen Kunti is completely aware that Krishna is the personality of Godhead, but he's simply playing a certain role in the material world existence. Prabhupada says, such an enlightened lady cannot commit a mistake. She is fully aware that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and she is playing the role of his aunt, and he is playing the role of his nephew. She plays that role nicely, but at the same time, she's always glorifying the Supreme Personality of Godhead in terms of how she wants to surrender more and more to his will. So uh, Krishna remains a mystery. For the, for the atheists, another word for atheist is fool. An atheist is a fool. Uh, you really have to be foolish to be an atheist because there are so many things within the material energy that indicate that someone someone great control is controlling them and that someone great is actually creating them but the atheists they they um you know they, from from any there's the agnostics there's the atheists there's the slight believers and then there's the there's so many there's the list is unlimited various so-called spiritual groups that have some explanation of the nature of the Supreme Lord, but they all fall short. They all fall short. And not only fall short, they can't ever understand him. They might get a little indication of what his energies and how they're working, but they, don't, they can't understand Krishna. Krishna is inconceivably great. And he remains, as it says here, he is invisible. And at the same time, he is visible, visible and invisible at the same time. So contradictions don't arise only on the material level. On the spiritual level, there is no such thing as a contradiction. When Prabhupada was asked by the Mensa Society in London, um, can Krishna create a rock he can't lift? Prabhupada responded, yes, he can create a rock he can't lift, and then he'll lift it. So Prabhupada was just giving an indication that Krishna's greatness is not checked by your limited knowledge. 
Krishna, Krishna is all powerful. He's everywhere. He's within the heart. He's, he's all pervading in Brahman existence. He's in the heart as localized Paramatma. And he's in, he appears in his personal form and from time to time in the material world. But he exists in his personal form completely in the spiritual world. So Krishna is there. Um, and Queen Kunti's bhakti is one of the best. You'll, as you go on in this particular chapter, you'll find that uh, it is, uh, her bhakti reaches such a height that it's unbelievable what she is offering in terms of the prayers for her own purification and for the instructions of the entire world. Srila Prabhupada loved these prayers by Queen Kunti. He, uh, he, the two sections in the Bhagavatam that Prabhupada really put time and energy in giving classes on was the, this eighth chapter. He, he spoke at least three different occasions on this whole chapter. And he also spoke three, three or four different times on Pallad Maharaj's prayers in the seventh canto. So Pallad Maharaj's prayers, Queen Kunti's prayers are quite phenomenal. They really bring out the nature of the Supreme Personality of Godhead through their devotion to Krishna. It's just uh, phenomenal how deep they are in devotion. So we can learn a lot from Srimati Kunti Devi. Um, you're about to enter, I think this is one of the first, maybe one of the first verses that kind of introduces the rest of the chapter all the way up for the next 30 verses. So this is uh, it's a very exciting section of the Bhagavatam. And uh, you'll see more and more. Here it mentions also that uh, Krishna in order to, uh, Prabhupada wants to make this point that she saw Krishna before her, Queen Kunti, but yet at the same time he entered the womb of Uttara to save Maharaj Pariksit from Aswatthama's Brahmastha. And so Krishna can be in so many different places at the same time and be doing different things. Just like when Krishna was in Dwarka, and Narada Muni came into Dwarka to visit Krishna, he came and he saw Krishna in one particular palace with one queen doing something, playing with, playing with the children. And then in another palace, he saw Krishna, you know, just relaxing. So he saw Krishna in, in so many palaces and each Krishna was doing something different. But there's no, there's no, there's not more than one Krishna. Krishna is one. If you say, well, there's many Krishnas, no. But this is his inconceivable nature. He could expand himself by himself and experience and perform different activities in different places simultaneously. That's why when we, when we offer prayers to Krishna, each of us are offering our own prayers to Krishna. He's hearing all of those. When they're sincerely offered, he's hearing those prayers. How can he hear? Sometimes we might say to be millions or maybe even billions of people praying to God at the same time. He's hearing them all. And it's not like he has to kind of like, you know, write it down and take shorthand on each one so he can go back over it and see what they said. <laughs> it's not like that. <laughs> He's, uh, <laughs> he could hear the prayers as their the prayers are being given and respond to the prayers at the same time in millions and billions of places simultaneously. So we get a little insight of the greatness of Krishna and the compassionate nature of Krishna. 
when we know how great Krishna is, how powerful Krishna is, then uh, we can, then, then we, we have no doubt that Krishna is there for me if I simply offer my devotion to him. Okay, so I'll stop there and see if there's any comments or questions. Thank you, Mark, for giving such a nice overview, like a nice um, class on the opulence of the greatness of, of Krishna. If there are any questions or comments, I think I saw a hand raised just now by Dipti. I don't know, Mataji, if you had a question, but you can definitely go ahead and ask a question because I saw your hand raised just now. Hmm. So, oh, there she is. Sorry, uh, sorry, it was it was by mistake, but I wanted to take a dashan of Guru Maharaj. So thank you so much for that. Anyways, thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for your lovely class. Um, and it's nice to see you. Hope you feel better soon. We are praying for you. Hare Krishna, thank you. Hare Krishna. Are there other uh, questions from other devotees? I thought I saw one that went on mute just now. Trying to see if I don't miss anybody. Maj, I have a question. As, as you were speaking about your Prabhupada, that he really liked the prayers of Palad Maharaj and Queen Kunti. As we read these prayers, Martin, as we hear and we listen, what should our what should our mood be like? You know, how can we really uh, really apply those? Where when we hear them, like how can we go deeper into it? Like really meditate on it? You know? Yeah, you just you answered the question. Oh, meditate on them. Read them again. Read them over and over again, and very carefully absorb yourself in what's being said. And that these things are within you also. They're brought out by these prayers by great souls. So if you go deeper into these prayers by the great souls, you also experience something in relationship to your own bhakti. No doubt. And also, Marj, in the beginning, you were talking about um, Krishna, you know, where he spoke at the end of this verse. Um, I'm trying to right that um that he received he reserves the right of not being exposed to persons who are not surrendered souls and then you're talking about those who are atheists those who are not those who are karma yogis and so on and so forth in terms of, am i getting a background noise in terms of preaching maharaj so if we were to be on the street or if we were to preach some to someone how do we know how far to go in our preaching, not knowing if the other person is ready to hear, rendered, you know, what Krishna appear, what well, well, Krishna expose himself. Like in preaching, how do we use that? Uh, well, if you're preaching, when you're preaching, getting a lot of feedback. So can you put everybody on mute? <laughs> can you put everyone on mute? Mataji, you are on mute, Mataji. Uh, please. Uh, oh, sorry. Maja, I said that everybody is on mute, so I don't know. Yeah, now we are now they are muted, Mataji. Thank okay, you. good. Perfect. Thank you. You want to know how far you can go with preaching to a person? Yes, Maharaj. Uh, you have to that you have to observe. Yeah. Someone can pass her because please help her. I had to, to mute someone, Maj. I'm sorry. Yeah, that you have to observe. And, and accordingly say what is appropriate and make sure that 
They you don't see, offend. If, if you're preaching, you see how it, how it's being accepted. Always just always stop and ask them to ask questions. Or ask them if they understand what you said. It's it's just observation of the person you're with. That's all. You just have to use your intelligence. That's all. It's, it's, that's basically the answer. Thank you, Maharaj. Are there other questions from devotees? Would like to really hear from others. Did I see some? Yes, Raj. Please go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Maharaj. I have a question about around. Uh, uh, I often don't feel comfortable praying to Lord Krishna. I feel more comfortable praying to like the Acharyas, like. Uh, Srila Prabhupada or Bhakti Vinod Thakur sometimes because I just feel that I just feel more mercy through them and I wondered if I am doing something wrong or if no you're doing something right and it's it's the acharyas are the compassionate expansions of the Lord's nature And you'll probably find more success, success in the sense that you'll feel more satisfied praying to them. Krishna is not so easy to reach unless you're very, very pure. We pray to the spiritual master. We pray to the previous acharyas. We pray to Gornatai. Now they're very merciful. Did that help, Raj Prabhu? Yes, that's perfect. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Srimati Mataji, you can go with the question. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances and wish to Srila Prabhupada. Um, Guru Maharaj, thank you so much for the wonderful class. Um, so I, I'm just, we know that from Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam that demigods uh, um, are like elevated uh, souls and uh, they, are, they, are the, um, they are more in uh, high level than the normal living beings. And um, but um, and sages also. So in Bhagavad Gita, I read uh, in tenth chapter that even demigods and the sages cannot understand Krishna. Um, so uh, I was just wondering, like um, even though they are having so much of power, and uh, I know they are also devotees of uh, Krishna. So why is it like that, Guru Maharaj? Like why they can't understand uh, Supreme Lord? Uh -huh. Anasuya. Yes, Maharaj. Bhagavad Gita, 726. Read it, please. Uh, the purport, Maharaj, or both the no. Start with the start with the translation. Sure. Vedaham samatita ni varta manani charjuna, Bavishyani chabutani, Mamtu Vedana kaschana. Translation, Vashya Prabhupada. O Arjuna, as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, I know everything that has happened in the past, all that is happening in the present, and all things that are yet to come. 
I also know all living entities, but me, no one knows. Should I read the purport, Mara? Um, let's see. Let's see. Um, go to seven three, same same chapter. Seven three, okay. Yeah. Translation: Out of many thousands among men, one may endeavor for perfection, and of those who have achieved perfection, hardly one knows me in truth. Okay, that you can read if you want. The whole purport? Yes, Mark. There are various grades of men, and out of many thousands, one may be sufficiently interested in transcendental realization to try to know what is the self, what is the body, and what is the absolute truth. Generally, mankind is simply engaged in the animal propensities, namely eating, sleeping, defending, and mating, and hardly anyone is interested in the transcendental knowledge. The first six chapters of the Gita are meant for those who are interested in transcendental knowledge, in understanding the self, the super soul, and the process of realization by Jnana Yoga, Dhyana Yoga, and discrimination of the self from matter. However, Krishna can be known only by persons who are in Krishna consciousness. Other transcendentalists may even may achieve impersonal Brahman realization. For this is easier than understanding Krishna. Krishna is the supreme person, but at the same time, he is beyond the knowledge of Brahman and Paramatma. The yogis and jnanis are confused in their attempts to understand Krishna. Although the greatest of the impersonalists, Sripad Sankaracharya, has admitted in his Gita commentary that Krishna, as the supreme personality of Godhead, as his followers do not accept Krishna as such. For it is very difficult to know Krishna, even though one has transcendental realization of impersonal Brahman. Should I go on, Maharaj? Uh, uh, devotional service of the Lord that ignores the authorized literature. Uh, it's not possible. In other words, unless one comes to pure devotional service, one cannot know no Krishna. Marge, I think that's right here. Even the great demigods are sometimes confused about Krishna. Is that what you wanted to highlight, Mara? Yeah. Sorry. Even the great demigods are sometimes confused about Krishna. Munyati yat suraya. Mamtu veda nat kaschana. No one knows me as I am, the Lord says. And if one does know me, then some Mahatma Su Durlaba, such a great soul is very rare. Therefore, unless one practices devotional service to the Lord, one cannot know Krishna as he is Sadvataha, even though one is the great scholar or philosopher. Only the pure devotees can know something of the inconceivable transcendental qualities in Krishna. His his being the cause of all causes, his omnipotence and opulence and his wealth, fame, strength, beauty, knowledge and, re and renunciation because Krishna is benevolently inclined to his devotees. No one can understand Krishna as he is by his blunt material senses, but he reveals himself to the devotees being pleased with them for their transcendental loving service unto him. That's good, Maharaj. Thank you, good, Maharaj. Yeah, it's not easy to know Krishna. Mm -hmm. If you really want to know Krishna, you have, to, you have to have one thing in mind constantly, Krishna and nothing else, zero. Krishna doesn't share his position with anything or anyone. <laughs> but the thing is, he takes care of his devotees. 
even though he, the devotees are not up to the standard, he's always protecting and taking care of his devotees. That's his love for his devotees. But to actually know him is not so easy. One has to have pure love for Krishna to know him. He's only known by pure love. And pure love means nothing else. No other person, no other situation, not even your own body has any meaning. <laughs> and then you're eligible to attain Krishna. Yes, Maharaj. Yeah. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Krishna, he's a, he can be a tough guy. <laughs> But he's very kind at the same time. He just doesn't reveal himself so easily. He wants exclusive loving service. That's that's the only way you can approach him. That's the only way you can know him. Marge, I really, really liked how you said Krishna doesn't like to share space with anyone. That was so like perfect. No, that's true. Yeah, he's, he's, anyone else is there, he's out. <laughs> and Marge, how can we come to that stage, Mara? Uh -huh. Of not sharing space with anyone in a, of, of that. Yeah, how can we come to that stage, Mara? All right, tomorrow, make your ticket to Vrindavan. Get on the plane, land in Delhi, and then get to, get to Vrindavan. And then find a place in Vrindavan and simply absorb yourself in Krishna's leelas and chant Krishna's name. Stay there for the rest of your life and die there, and then you go back home, back to Delhi. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, you just woke me up. <laughs> we don't recommend that because. We need you to preach to the other devotees. <laughs> so be, because if you're preaching, Krishna's, he may not be revealing himself so much, but he's at least pre appreciating and taking care of you nicely since you're preaching to the other devotees. He's with every one of us, especially his devotees, 24 7. But you can only experience him through your intelligence. That's how you experience him. You can experience his mercy through your intelligence. And Marge, and, and since you mentioned that, Marge, you know, like, and the prophet also says, we heard prophet says that Vrindavan is everywhere, you know, all temples. If we look at that place as Vrindavan, then Vrindavan is there. Vrindavan is, what Prabhupada is saying is that Vrindavan is a state of consciousness. Yes. So is that a safe way to give our lives in Prabhupada's service, Maharaj? Yeah, develop Vrindavan consciousness. What is the residence of Vrindavan? They only know Krishna. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> but if you have to preach, that's, an, that's also Vrindavan consciousness. If you're preaching the message of Krishna, to, the, to others, that's Vrindavan. Yes, uh, Shumati Mataji, go ahead. Please ask a question. Yeah, uh, Guru Maharaj, I have one more question. Uh, thank you for the answer. Um, so uh, we see, whenever we see these prayers, um, I, I think that I have to recite them daily. But uh, I usually forget about that. But, uh, um, but whenever we are in distress or in happiness, we pray. But always, we, um, how to be in prayful mood, Guru Maharaj? No, when you realize that you are so, you're helpless. <laughs> when you realize you're helpless. And that, and that realization is not just some idea, it is we are helpless. We're in a very dangerous situation in this material world. One minute, everything is nice. Next minute, it's all over. 
It can come at any time, at any age. Get sick, you walk out of your house, you, know, you can fall on the ground and die. <laughs> it's such a dangerous place. Padam, padam, ya vi padam. It's a Prabhupada Siddhanta said, this material world is no place for a gentleman. It's not a nice place. There's so, how, think about how many ways you can experience pleasure and think about how many ways you can experience pain. And tell me what is the proportion in numbers? <laughs> When you realize this is a dangerous place, <laughs> it's dangerous. Of course, Krishna is protecting his devotees, but still we have to understand it's a very dangerous place. And if we forget Krishna at any time, we could, you know, and, and that prayerful mood means to remember Krishna always. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Yeah. If you practice that, you will feel so happy and protected. Mm. You'll feel his protection. Not only know it's there, you'll feel it. But if we think, you know, we we'll just go on with our laissez-faire laissez attitude, then we never know. There's crazy people out there that are ready to kill anybody at any time. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's just, it's just a wild place. The world's getting wilder and wilder. More demons, probably said the demons are only increasing in Kali Yuga. Of course, the devotees also are increasing, but the demons are becoming, becoming more and more prominent in this age. And even ordinary people are adopting demoniac characteristics in the way they live, the way they eat, the way they, the way they talk. You ever see the way the, the, the non-devotees talk? You can't listen to it. It's just like painful. <laughs> It's a crazy, it's a pretty crazy world. And the nature of the material world is Dukalayama Sasratam. It's miserable and it's temporary. And it's a dangerous place. No one's guaranteed even the next minute. As one great soul said, Maharaj Pariksha had was guaranteed seven days, but we're not even guaranteed seven minutes. So unless we get really serious about our spiritual life, we might find ourselves in a very difficult situation. That prayerful mood is the proper mood. Or at least remember Krishna. That, that is the best you can do, just remember Krishna. Somehow remember Krishna. Yena kenet, yena kenet prokarena, nama Krishna nivesaya. Kena was a yena kena prokarena, mana Krishna nivesaya. Somehow or other, remember Krishna. That's a verse from the Bhakti Rasama to Sindhu, Nectar Devotion. Somehow or other, we remember Krishna. <laughs> yes, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hare Krishna. That was a very nice question, Srimati. Thank you so much for asking that question. Help all of us. Help me. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna.
Marsh, we are approaching nine o'clock and I don't want to stretch it for you because I know that you're still recovering. Is it okay, Marsh, if we end the class? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I was, I didn't want to push you, but I didn't want to think for you too, Marsh. Thank you so much. We pray that you get better. We pray for your good health. We ask all the devotees to please pray for Mars so that he can get better and we can get more of his association. Until then, Vantra Krapati Vyascha, Kripa Sindhu Bevacha, Patita Nam Bhavanevyo, Vaishnava Vyona Mona Mahashila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. His Holiness Chandramali Swami, Ki Jai. Get better soon, Marj. We are going to pray for you, Marj. Harrisburg Yatra, Ki Jai. Thank you so much, Maharaj.